Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heals. Heals being an acronym for Health, Education, Advocacy, and Leadership of Southern Nevada. And we're in the studio today with Derek Parent, the Vice President of Lending for the Parent Team, part of Cross Country Mortgage. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live in the studio here every Thursday at 10 a.m. And then we rebroadcast out on iTunes, Stitcher, a whole bunch of those different social media websites. We also put it inside of Heels Headlines that delivers every other Thursday. And you can also find it on the Heels website, lasvegasheels.org. We like to bring in leaders, movers, shakers, educators, people that are advancing healthcare here in Southern Nevada, whether that's through innovation, education, or bringing patients from out of market in. But today, Today, we've got a special episode of Inside Medicine. We're, we're going to be talking about workforce and why that matters and why that's important to the growth of healthcare. And we've got an expert in that right here in the studio today. Derek, welcome to Inside Medicine. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So before we dive in and start learning about the parent team and cross country and what you're doing, because it's a unique episode and really what it's going to come down to is workforce. Yes. Uh, but before we dive in, let's get to know Derek. So tell us a little bit about yourself. And really, we w- love hearing the story of what brought you to Vegas, because none of us are from here, yeah. but we all call Vegas home today. So tell us a little bit about that. So I, I've been in the lending industry for a little over 20 years. Um, back home from Providence, Rhode Island, I won a trip. And a trip took me to, to Las Vegas. And funny, we're getting ready to check out of the Hilton. And uh, we go to the cab stand. And we tell the cab with the cab driver we're we're headed back to Rhode Island. He's like, "No, you're not." I'm like, "We didn't even realize that there was a blizzard back home." He's like, it, "It's all snowed out." So we went. To, I went to go visit the company that I was work for at the time called Consigo Finance, and they were all the employees were gone, and it was just a branch manager. And I asked if I could come back and work in Las Vegas, and she said yes. So literally, I went home 28 days later. I landed back in Las Vegas, like was not a, without even thinking about it, it was just the change I I wanted, uh, you know, a little over 19 years now I've been here and this is my home. You know, I moved here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and, uh, nobody leaves Pittsburgh. Very few people do. (laughs) And so I came out to Vegas like most, ah, let me give it a shot. I'll be out there for a year, maybe two years, see what it's all about. And you get here and you go, holy crap, 330 days of sunshine, the best (laughs) entertainment, the best dining. 24-7 24-7 lifestyle, why didn't somebody tell me about this sooner? Yeah. Uh, ditched all of the cold weather gear, ditched the uh, the shovels and the scrapers, and you know what? You couldn't drag me back to Pennsylvania except in the spring and the fall to visit family. Yeah. So, the, 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 the closest I actually came to Las Vegas before coming here was watching it on you know like HBO fights. <laughs> you know, like you see the strip, but then when you get here, it, it was just life. Like, like li- I lived in Summerlin, and... It was just beautiful, and we we didn't visit the strip as much, but I worked, and it was an amazing it was an amazing place to be in 2000. Yeah, we'll be at a conference this weekend, and we'll be hoping to to get some people to move out here. So yeah. we uh, go to an OR. It's OR today. It's a bunch of uh, perioperative nurses, and you know you have to break through that stigma of. We don't live in the casino. We don't come down here to the first floor to have our buffet and <laughs> hang out, and we don't get our mail up at the front hotel right. front desk. So it's a different way. And once they realize we're a city of 2.4 million, yes. and people own homes, yeah. and people have kids that go to normal schools and hang out in parks, it's, yeah. uh, it's a different way, I and mean, you're selling the lifestyle. It really is. It really is. Like, I live in Henderson, so see all the growth on St. Rose uh, with the rate of practice facility going in, uh, my children go to school here, so it's 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 life, it's home, it's it's probably it's I wouldn't want to live any any anywhere else. And I'll bet the mortgage business is good. So you've been in it for 20 years. Uh, we have a a common friend in Clay Duncan, yeah. and you you spent some years working with Clay, and yeah. now you're running a, a division for Cross Country Mortgage. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and how you got to where you are today, because you run one of the biggest teams in Las Vegas. Yeah, um, so it's funny. I, I stumbled into the mortgage industry a little over 20 years ago um, and just fell in love with helping people. You know, we really started off with debt consolidation, uh, people that had debt, you know, take them down, saving them, you know, thousands of dollars a, a month. And then, my like I said, my career started there, and then I transferred here, and I worked for Consigo for a couple of years, and then I went to go work for a mutual friend of ours, Clay Duncan, and... Uh, 
honestly, it, it was, it, it, I, I couldn't imagine being in any other business except what I do. The, the gratitude or the, the, how grateful I am that one, I get to help people save money, but two, create that home ownership. Most people don't realize like, what home ownership truly does to a community just like this. It's huge. It's the retention part of the equation. We're going to yeah. spend a lot of time on the second part of the show talking about recruitment, retention, and why that's so critical in healthcare because as we're growing our organizations, it all comes down to people. Yeah. And, you know, it's heals. A lot of people don't realize our, our mission is to improve the quality of health in Southern Nevada. And we, we, we acknowledge we've got some quality issues, but that's caused by lack of access and the lack of access is caused by lack of workforce. Yeah. And we just don't have enough great practitioners. We've got amazing practitioners. We don't have enough. Mm -hmm. And when we get them here, we've got to retain them. And we're going to dive in and talk about why home ownership helps out with that. But you recently joined the board of Las Vegas Heels. We're grateful for, for that. Uh, and you play a big role in, and you're really integrated into the healthcare industry. Why was healthcare so appealing to you um you know i i go to a lot of events and i just saw that the healthcare was growing was growing fast like thirty seven thousand jobs were created between healthcare and education so we just wanted to be uh be a part of that and we saw that um just a lot of articles on forbes about home ownership and how it really boosts uh culture and reduces turnover so knowing that where healthcare was growing, we wanted to be a part of that. Yeah, and Hills, you know, we've grown quite a bit. We've been around for about 15 years now. Uh, the organization represents groups that employ about 34,000 healthcare professionals. And mm -hmm. if I were to go out and talk to all of the C-suite and I say, what keeps you up at night? Uh, unequivocally, they answer workforce. Yeah, We struggle finding them. It costs a lot of, a lot of money to get them here. And then we struggle keeping them here. Yeah. And so we're going to talk after this commercial break about what the parent team is doing to really help healthcare industry and keeping our practitioners here in, in town. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a, a quick commercial break. We're going to hear a little bit about the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards, which is coming up here in October. And we're going to hear some from uh, the Oquendo Center, one of our strategic partners that also has the largest surgical training facility west of the Mississippi. So let's go ahead and hear a little bit about our gala coming up and then the Oquendo Center. Be back in a few minutes. Join Las Vegas Heels as we celebrate the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards on Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Las Vegas Heels will return to the magnificent Four Seasons Hotel to recognize and celebrate six more honorees. Be sure to save that date again, Thursday, October 24th, and be on the lookout for your personal invitation. If you know a physician or healthcare leader worthy of recognition, consider nomination. Nominations open on May 31st. We look forward to seeing everyone at the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards on Thursday, October 24th, 2019. Back to Inside Medicine. We're here in the studio today with Derek Parent, the uh, Vice President of Lending for the Parent Team, which is part of Cross Country Mortgage. Derek, well, welcome back. And uh, we're going to spend a little time now talking about the importance of the program that you've been putting in place and what that means to the healthcare industry. Because as we touched on before the commercial break, uh, recruitment retention its what keeps our, our C-level guys up at night. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when people think of strategic partnerships within healthcare, they probably don't connect dots between healthcare and mortgage lending. Yeah. How have you done that? And 
we're going to dive into the program that you've developed for Heels. Uh, but why is that important? And then talk about home ownership and what that means to somebody. You've got some great personal share stories that you've shared with me before, and I want our audience to hear some of those stories. Yeah, so the, the program that we put together was called the Infinity Program. And the reason for the Infinity Program it's it's innovation. We will always I could consider myself an innovator in in lending. We're coming out with different programs to serve needs. Uh, so when you're trying to retain uh, an employee or even an employee that comes to work, he loves working, but they're stressed out. Most of the time, it's financial stress. So our program wasn't just designed to help you know people um, relocate and and get into. Um, being a first time buyer was also to help with the the refinance, help someone save money, you know, debt consolidation. So um, the the my program offers a steep discount, like a twenty one hundred dollar, you know, credit towards closing costs. So what that does is for the employer, it helps with a, a, a benefit for the employee. So it, you know what it really does too is it's in in the space that I grew up in, which is kind of that recruitment, that talent space. Uh, we oftentimes find employers uh, offering more and more sign-on bonuses, and now they're starting to look at retention bonuses. But this is a no-cost benefit to an employer, which is the equivalent of a sign-on bonus because they're saying, hey, buy a house out here. It's $21 of basically free money yeah. uh, for you to get into a house. And for the employer, they now have somebody that's committed to, to the community, which is huge. You know, if Nick, if we could throw up the screen that talks a little bit about the benefits, uh, you know, talk to us, Derek, a little bit about uh, what those closing costs many times looks like and how that equates up to that $2,100 amount. Yes. Um, so the, the closing costs would be um, the appraisal, uh, all lender fees, uh, credit report, flood certs. Even though uh, we live in the desert, we still have additional uh, things that we have to do, especially with the flood certs. But um, you you kind of hit the nail on the head with with the with the re, um, the retention. That's yeah, that's big. So you know, I've been it's kind of a, it shows my age. I've been in the human resource space now for about thirty years. Uh, back before we called it human resources, we called it personnel. Uh, and you know, we've always lived by this. It's easier and cheaper to retain people than it is to recruit them. So I'll, I'll share some numbers that uh, in the nursing space, back 15 years ago when we had a nursing shortage, very similar to what we're experiencing today, the average cost to recruit a nurse, to recruit them in through the door was about $18,000. And that's whether you were using a staffing agency, a third party recruiter, uh, direct marketing, whatever that was, the average cost to replace a nurse so that's when somebody leaves yeah. the retention side it jumped from 18 grand to sixty eight thousand dollars yeah and so home ownership keeps them there yeah it's it's i i we you know in our industry too we have the same it's the the numbers are pretty much the same uh it's very expensive to when you lose a person that's why when we rolled out the program this is absolutely free so when you said you know, the signing bonuses and so forth. This is just another thing for an employee, for an employer to put in the employee uh, package, the benefit of home ownership, the benefit of saving $2,100 up front. So for us, it was something that we wanted to add back to the community. Yeah, and it's it retains them here. So yeah. many times we talk about, I you know, we call it the third space. Yeah. So we all have three spaces in our lives. We have our, 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 our work life, our home life, and then a third space of how you engage in the community. But it really starts with feeling like you're part of the community. And yeah. you don't feel like you're part of the community unless you're a homeowner. Yeah. When you're just renting, it's just easy to say, hey, let me cut the cord and move back to Southern California, move back to the Midwest. But when you're in home ownership, you've, you're part of the community. You're, you live there, and, you're, you, and that, that's what keeps people here. Yeah. It's, it, it's a sense of pride. You know, you, when you own a home, you, 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 you pick up something when you just rent. You uh, you may just walk past it, so it's definitely um, the pride of of home ownership, but also but being a homeowner, you know, rents have jumped dramatically uh, in our town, super transparent. Like the average rent that was nine hundred is now thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, oh right, for like a one bedroom. So now when you own, 
if you're doing a 30 year fix, you know your payment's fixed for 30 years. Yep. Renting, your, your rent can go up every year. Yeah, yeah, that, I never thought of that. So, you know, at least you know when you own, it's fixed. You and, don't. And Derek, you're well recognized, versed, and have been covered in several magazines uh, in the high rise community because Vegas didn't have those years back. You know, when I moved here 26 years ago, we didn't have high rises. Now they're everywhere. So talk to us a little bit about your experience with the high rise yeah. uh, community or recognized in high rise life. Tell us about how you cut your teeth in there. Well, the, <laughs> I, I, it was pain, to be honest with you. It was just pain. So I went to go buy um, a high rise and went to go do the lending side. And it was only private money and hard money. So knowing, you know, private money, hard money is very uh, expensive. 10% interest rate, 25% down. 5% in, in origination fees, so it was expensive. Um, so I, I, I knew that there was an underserved community in High Rise, so I really went at it. And within six months, uh, Via Towers, which is on Las Vegas Boulevard, was one of the very first towers that we got approved for conventional financing. There was financing on some of the, the towers, but not conventional. I, will, I like to say I was the first one to bring conventional financing to Las Vegas Boulevard. And that's important. So we find a lot of our healthcare providers, more our higher level practitioners, yeah. uh, find themselves in a high rise. They like the ability to lock and leave, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. And do you see that activity? Because obviously it's a higher net worth individual that's moving into these high rises and it's a different style of life. Yeah. You'd be surprised. So a lot of the, the high rises are still way under value. Like what was like a million dollars before is about four or five hundred thousand dollars now, just because the market didn't come back as fast as our housing did. But the quality of life in a in a um, a high rise, like you you kind of touched on it earlier, like the strip isn't like we don't live down there to go get our mail, but we live in the the high rise. You actually do. So it's convenience, security. Um, so a couple of doctors that I have done loans for, um, down on the other uh, end of the strip, they worked 15 hours a day. So I suggested, Hey, have you looked at a condo, a high rise? And when they went there, they realized it was a way of, it was a quality of life for them. They, they have the pool, they have the maintenance, um, they have a gym in the building. So it was very convenient for them. So we found that, you know, serving them and asking additional questions before they got here, that that was the way that some of them wanted to go. And something that we're seeing a lot of, too, is this migration of physicians from high-cost areas, yeah. particularly California. Yeah. You know, California, it's the cost of living is just ridiculous. Uh, and so they want to claim their primary residence uh, in Nevada for that tax break. They still kind of want to keep hold of their their, their beach house there. Uh, but they like living in a high-rise so they could lock and leave during the week and then jump on their plane to fly to California to spend the weekend. So we're seeing a lot of that activity. And frankly, more and more because as Las Vegas becomes uh, a destination for professional sports teams with the Raiders and the Vegas Golden Knights and looks like we're going to get a, a, a soccer league here pretty yeah. soon. And it wouldn't shock me if uh, the, the MGM and the Merns announced a, an NBA team here in the upcoming months. And yeah. I, I think that's going to bring more professional sports, which they require a higher level of health care delivery. And I think we're going to see a boom of more and more health care providers yeah. moving here. So it's perfect timing. And we're appreciative of what you're doing to help these guys. It it helps the entire healthcare industry. Well, what I, what I love about what you said with, with MGM, they already have uh, the Aces, which is our women's basketball team. These women are amazing uh, to go watch. They're spectacular, great team, great energy. Um, Bill Ambe is the coach, so, you know, growing up back in the, the 80s watching them play, it is now... But just you know, like you said, this that the way this town has has grown is is uh, amazing. So funny, we're doing a loan for a guy right now who is a big guy um, in the Raiders uh, organization. And is you said the same thing. He's keeping his house in California yep. and making this his his second home. And him and his wife they bought a high rise. And uh, so it just when you say that, it's touching because it's actually happening now. And I get to deal with a lot of the guys coming over from uh, the Raiders now. You know, as the team slowly comes, or uh, you see the the facility being built on uh, the highway, it's it's becoming a lot more real as we pass it. 2020. 2020. 2020. It's going to be a big year. So, is it a good time to buy a house right now? It's a great time. It's it, it truly is. You know, um, 
the market's still growing. You know, we're still about 20 to 30 percent below all time highs. So we have a lot of room to grow. And we're not built on a, um, a real estate um, crash. Back when the market crashed here, it was completely bad loans. You know, the 80 20 loan. So no money, people were not putting money down. They were just coming in, people buying five, six homes at, um, at a time. We don't have that now. The state put a law in, in place. You have to have the ability to repay. So although you may have a foreclosure of someone losing a job, you, you're not going to see massive foreclosures like we once did. Yeah, we had, obviously, back after the, the, the crash, there yeah. was uh, that undercurrent that wiped out a lot of the real estate yeah. industry. But it's nice to see it back. I'm As a homeowner, I'm appreciative of it because now I'm yeah. watching my home value go up rather yes. than down. Uh, and you know what? I think it's going to continue trending that way. Yeah. So you spend a lot of your time in healthcare, you know, joining the board of Heels and contributing at the level that you've done were appreciative, but I know there's a lot of nonprofits out there that you've done work for. We talked a little bit about a cancer group. Uh, Most recently, I heard you raised a bunch of money for Easter Seals. Tell us a little bit about that. We just had Christine Zach, their CEO on the show, literally a couple weeks ago, so it's a perfect time. So tell us a little bit about what you did for Easter Seals. Uh, So, you know, I was a part of a yeah, I saw something years ago. Um, someone was raising money for for cancer, so I made it my my mission for seven days um, out of a year to raise money. So it hit family, friends, the community, and just raise money for a great local grassroots organization. So Easter Sales, I was I was honored to raise a little over fifteen thousand dollars for them. Nice. Um, so, but every year it's 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 a it's a different organization that we're, you know, being here is the way to give back is to. To, to not only time, but to financially support some of these amazing organizations. Well, the the community is uh, fortunate to have you here. Yeah. The healthcare community appreciates everything that you're doing. We've covered quite a bit of ground. Is there anything in particular that you want our audience to know? Yeah, I, I would let them know that Las Vegas is uh, an amazing place to live. Las, Las Vegas, Henderson, um, truly it's a gift that keeps on g- giving you hit it. You know, the, you wake up every day and it's sunny. Some states you wake up and it's gloomy. Uh, it's, it's amazing to live here. I, I enjoy my ride to work in the morning. I, I enjoy stopping at Starbucks. It's just, it's a, it's a great place to work and They have great friends just like you and a lot of other leaders uh, in this town that are, are really bringing, you know, this healthcare to be making it, it's real on, on what you guys are doing. And I'm grateful to be a friend and, and a, um, a part of heels. Thank you, Derek. Derek, appreciate you having you on the show. Again, Derek Parent, the uh, Vice President of Lending for Cross Country Mortgage here in Las Vegas. And we appreciate all you do. And for our guests that are out there, we look forward to seeing you back next week for another edition of Inside Medicine.